Okay. Uh, let's start uh, lecture three, CAR two, lecture three, applications of integration. Uh, I will discuss volume today, but before that, I will finish the, the example I started yesterday. So the example was this: the area between these two curves and. Uh, I applied ln and ln gave me this equation in the end. So if I solve this equation, I will find x. Uh, one solution to this equation is x equals 1. You can check. So x equals 1 gives me, let's check it here, 1 equals 1 plus ln of 1. This is 0. So this checks. So x equals 1 is an answer. So this a can be 1, or it can, it can be uh, uh, other numbers. So you have to check and see if uh, this equation has other uh, solutions. Uh, what I sometimes do is uh, graph it. If, if you graph it, you will see that it is increasing. But you have to prove that it is increasing. First of all, uh, I, I consider this function fx in fact is this minus this so I'm finding zero of this fx so zero of this fx one zero of this fx is one so this fx has at least one solution uh, let's say one zero and that zero is at x equals one let's check and see if it is increasing so I, I found f prime x f prime x is 2x plus 1 over x minus 1 and x should be bigger than 0, not even 0, because ln is not defined from less than 0. And in fact, uh, this is from 0 to some, some place. So uh, x is bigger than 0. Now, if x is between 0 and 1, if you flip this thing, then 1 over x is bigger than 1 over 1, which is 1. So 1 over x minus 1 is bigger than 0. So this part is bigger than 0. So f prime is bigger than 0, and this is also bigger than 0. If x equals 1, then f prime is 2, which is bigger than 0. If x is bigger than 1, then 2x is bigger than 1. So this 2x minus 1 is bigger than 0. So f prime x is bigger than 0, which means that f x is increasing uh, from 0 to infinity. So if f x is increasing and it is 0 at 1, you can check and see uh, f x, in fact, for x equals, say, 0.5, for example. Uh, is negative and for say x equals 2 for example is positive so this function starts at ne in negative territory and goes to positive territory like this and it intersects uh, the x-axis at point 1 and since it's increasing it doesn't come back and intersect at another point so this uh, x equals 1 is the only answer so let's now find the area uh, area is in fact remember it was so from 0 to 1 so this point is in fact 1 and uh, I have e to power x minus x e to power x squared dx and I separated this 0 to 1 e to power x dx minus integral x e to power x squared dx 0 to 1 now, in this one I said, uh, this is, you can, uh, you can see the derivative of this x squared, which is 2x is here. In fact, that's x, but it's the multiple of that 2x. It is one half times the derivative. So, you can use substitution, where I just leave that to you, to use substitution. Integral of this is simply e to the power x. This one will be minus one half e to the power x squared uh, from 0 to 1. Uh, so this one is e to power 1 uh, minus 1 minus 1 half e to power 1 minus 1. So in fact it is 1 half times e to power 1 minus 1. So that is the area between these two curves. Okay. So this this uh, trick sometimes works when you want to prove that uh, uh, some function has just one zero, for example. Then, uh, or you need that the uh, function is increasing. You know, that's from calc 1. If you find f prime and show that f prime is positive, then the function is 
increasing in the, the domain that it is given. Okay, so let me erase this and start volume. Let me check something here so I'll make sure that everything is doing okay on this. So, well, so let's see, volume is like you have a, an object, say, three-dimensional object, or any shape, say, then you, what you do is this. Now, in this, uh, say, at this level, since we do not have knowledge of, I mean, 3D knowledge, say, so we, we don't have, uh, it's not CAD 3, say. So in CAD 3, you will see that you can treat this thing in 3D. Now, for us, what we do here, we just assume that this is kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, it's definitely three-dimensional, but uh, we can say that, uh, say, maybe like the x-axis goes through this, passes through this, for example, and the y-axis is like this. Or the other way around. It might be the y-axis goes this way and x-axis goes this way. But anyway, what we do is this. So let's assume that uh, we have an axis here, and the x-axis say, and uh, this is say y-axis, for example. Then uh, at some point x, Just imagine this is, uh, this can be just anywhere, and so align y axis, so it, it makes sense. So just intersect this with a plane that goes through point x, and the plane, imagine it is perpendicular to the x axis here. So it intersects this in some uh, shape. So, it doesn't have to be circular or anything. It can be, I mean, no, no, nothing special. Then, if I go further, dx, say, and I do the same thing, I have, okay, so. Doing this, I will get some, say, cut, or let's say some portion of this solid, say, that looks like this. Let's assume that these are straight lines because this dx is very small, so uh, we can assume that it's just basically uh, this infinitesimal. So uh, we have something like this. Okay. So this is dx, and uh, this area here, the area of this uh, cross section, area of this cross section is ax area of this cross section is AX. Now what is the volume of uh, this thing? This is a cylinder. So a cylinder, volume of a cylinder is simply, uh, cylinder means that these two have the same shape. Now why can we assume that they have the same shape? Because this, the DX is so small. So from here to here it has not changed that much. So we can assume that they have almost the same shape. Uh, they, they, this is not so nice, no, I, I mean, it should be you know, the same shape, let me see this go like this, and that one like the top. So, anyway, so the two bases 
have the same shape, then the volume of this thing is in fact Ax times dx. So it is the area of a base times height. So cylinder is area of the volume of cylinder is area of the base times height. So if we assume we know that it's like for a, a, a volume, sorry, volume of a cylinder. For area, we assume that we know area of a rectangle. That was fx dx. That was assuming that we know area of a rectangle. Here we assume that we know volume of a cylinder, and volume of a cylinder is area of a, a, one of the bases, assuming that the bases have, are the same, uh, times height. So that is ax times dx. So my differential of volume differential of volume will be ax dx okay so volume of this object is integral dv and that is uh, assuming that I start at say a and go to point b say then it is a and b ax dx okay so, using the idea that I, de uh, I developed in the previous lecture, that is finding differential of whatever we are trying to calculate, in this situation, volume, so I found differential of volume, dv, which was ax dx, uh, and integrating that differential will give me the whole thing. So, integrating dv will give me v. Okay. So what we do, this, uh, this is called slicing. So we slice this uh, three-dimensional object and we find a uh, volume of those slices and add them. This means sum. Integral means is S. That's S written this way. So integral is a sum, Riemann sum in fact. That's the limit of a Riemann sum. So you can, if you don't like this idea or this method, you can say, okay, you just cut it in different slices and just put those slices together. And if you do that, then it's like xi, this is like delta xi. Uh, and uh, you can take a look at the book. In fact, um, math books usually do the remands on right? this method. I mean, not this way of looking at integration. But anyway, so, that's all we should do, slice and uh, integrate the dv, or the volume of that slice. Okay, now one important category of uh, 3D objects is what we call the solid of revolution. Solid of revolution is this. You have, a, say, a region in XY plane. Say you have this region in XY plane. And you rotate this region about the X axis or Y axis, depends. Now in this case, I rotate this about the X axis. So if I do this, I will get something like so rotation means that uh, well, let me first rotate. So well, let me find the point down here. About here. Okay, so this should go something here. Uh, I 
So this is a sign of revolution, and uh, we find its volume using the same concept of a slicer. So I should find volume of a slice. But volume of slice was what? Volume of slice. was dv in fact, that was ax dx. Well the dx is dx all the time, so we need this. And what is this? This is area of a cross section. Of a cross section, in fact, at x. So I, have, I should find area of a cross section basically. Then let's write dx and integrate, and you have the volume. Now, what is area of a cross section? Uh, it's very simple. Let me show you. So if this is O at x here, this is x. At x, I need this area. Let me erase all these things so you can see what's going on. Uh, okay, so this is x here, point x, and so I need this area. Now this area is uh, 